So, hearty good morning and uh, a warm welcome to all of you to the second day of the world's largest fintech fest, the Global Fintech Fest. Now, this event is organized by Fintech Convergence Council and Payments Council of India of Internet and Wild Association of India. I am Kavya R. Chavali, and I must admit that it gives me immense pleasure to welcome everybody once again to another day of enriching sessions and insights featuring our thought leaders. The fest is presented by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India and Reserve Bank of India, and supported by Niti Aayog, Startup India and Invest India. We'd also like to take a quick opportunity to thank our partners for their fantastic support. The entire summit is covered by Razorpay. The summit is brought to you by Amazon Pay and WhatsApp, in association with Google Pay and Open Financial Technologies. Our digital payments partner, Cashree Payments. Now, the second edition of the summit with the theme FinTech empowering a global digital economy will provide an in-depth understanding of the latest business policy tech landscape globally. In fact, we welcome you all because it's time to also welcome our uh, speakers for the fireside chat on an investor's viewpoint to a winner exit strategy for startups. Now, without further ado, let me also invite our speakers. We have with us Ms. Ananya Chandra, managing partner in OPACT, who would be moderating today's fireside chat. And we are also joined by our esteemed speaker, Mr. Nobutake Suzuki, President and CEO, NEFG Innovation Partners. I'm going to request our, our attendees to please go ahead and put your questions in the chat window, and we'll ensure that we try to have them responded towards the end of the session. So without any further delay, it's time to get our first session started, and I'd like to hand over the proceedings to Mrs. Chandra. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Kavya. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ananya Chandra, and as Kavya mentioned, I'm the managing partner of Innopact, an early stage investor in consumer technologies across emerging markets. I'm delighted to be here today and to be chatting with Mr. Nobutake Suzuki, the managing director of Open Innovation at MUFG Group, the largest banking group in Japan and the fifth largest bank globally. Suzuki-san is also the president and CEO of MUIP, MUFG Group's Corporate Venture Capital or CVC Fund. He started his career as a banker with MUFG, but with a stint in New York back in 1993, his career ambitions changed inexorably towards the path of venture capital. Suzuki-san, welcome to this fireside chat. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. So I will let you take your story from here, uh, Suzuki-san. What intrigued you about Silicon Valley tech companies back in the 90s? And what's your career journey been like since New York? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I actually, so, you know, I graduated, you know, my university in uh, 1991 and I joined the Sanwa Bank, which is Japanese commercial bank, and uh, one of the four banks merged into a current MG. So I spent, uh, you know, uh, 10 years in the bank and I was mainly in charge of uh, industry, you know, analyst research. And uh, I happened to, you know, uh, be, you know, uh, you know, uh, assigned to be a uh, analyst in uh, New York, you know, from 1906 to 2001, and uh, where I was mainly in charge of a TMT industry. So uh, at the time, so you know, I covered uh, uh, mainly, you know, uh, West Coast tech companies or uh, media companies like uh, Time Warner, AT and T, and so on, and also. Uh, uh, some other industries. And I had a chance to visit, uh, you know, Bay Area uh, quite often. And, uh, especially, so, you know, it's, uh, you know, golden age of a rise of internet. And, uh, so led by, uh, uh Bill Clinton and Al Gore. Mm. And, uh, so, you know, uh, I think in 1996, you know, we didn't have a Google yet, but, uh, uh, you know, we are seeing a rise of our internet companies like Yahoo or Cisco or such a companies. And I visit uh, companies like, uh, you know, uh, also Amazon, Intel, MD and XCOM, which is, uh, uh, origin of, uh, you know, current paper and so on. Right. And, uh, yes, uh, I did maybe more than 300 companies at the time. And, uh, so I realized that, so these companies, these great startups were not backed by the banks. But uh, these are backed by uh, PCs. So uh, suddenly, to me, you know, banking business seems so boring. Uh, but on the other hand, so in equity business or investment in startups seems so exciting. So I decided to jump in the VC industry in 2002. So I joined the Japanese VC firm called Global Brain. Right. And uh, so uh, 
which where I was mainly in charge of uh, investment in the both domestic and uh, foreign startups, and also my name it was CBC Fund. And uh, uh, actually, you know, at the time, the still Japanese VC industry was uh, so small. And also my firm only had a $10 million fund, very small. Uh, but uh, so I think so I, I was so lucky because uh, so I can so grow along with uh, so development of Japanese policy industry. So eventually, so my firm, global you know, uh, you know, managed more than $1 billion, you know, uh, AUM funds eventually. Right. Yes. So, uh, so mainly, you know, uh, I was in charge of, uh, you know, developing a new investment in foreign companies at the farm. And uh, initially, so we started investing in the U.S. companies. And after that, so we moved to uh, South Asia and uh, Korea and so on. Yeah. This is with and, Global Brain, the VC. Yes, Global Brain yeah. VC. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but uh, uh, I happened to so meet a guy from MLG in uh, 2017, and right. he told me that MLG had a plan to launch a CBC. Hmm. And uh, so I decided to you know jump in MLG again. So you know, uh, so. I felt like it's a, you know, kind of a curious fate for me, you know. So I'm a kind of so boomerang banker. So once got out from the bank, but, uh, you know, came, you know, coming back to the bank. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And now, actually, if, I, if I'm correct, MUFG Bank is the most active Japanese bank uh, for fintech investments and partnerships globally. Uh, and your CBC fund has over $350 million uh, at, and assets under management. Yes. Um, yes. So I just want to also, you know, give you a hearty congratulations for closing fund two uh, Thank in you very much. of 180 Thank million. You so now with fund two under the belt, Suzuki san, what role is MUIP seeing itself play in the global fintech ecosystem? Yes, uh, thank you. So our targets are startups which have a very strong synergy with MFC. So we are basically kind of strategic investors for fintech companies. So we don't just invest in companies, but also you know try to you know uh, bridge between our portal companies and the MLG's ribbon division to launch new businesses. And uh, so that's our mission. So uh, currently we have more than 20, you know, uh, 20 portal companies and mainly US, uh, Israel, uh, South Asia, and also Japan, uh, not yet in India. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, so uh, our major target of investments are like, uh, you know, fintech range players and mm -hmm. also embedded finance and uh, also technologies in uh, wealth management, asset management, and also global markets. And also what we call digital CXO, which means, uh, uh, you know, any kind of a cloud services which can streamline MLG's SME clients' businesses. And also, uh, recently, SDGs and ESGs are also very important targets. Like, uh, let's say, so measurement of, uh, you know, uh, greenhouse gas or so on. Yeah, since MLG right. uh, has been committed to uh, also carbon neutrality. Yeah. Got it. And um, and what's the size of the typical investment that MUFG makes? Yes. Uh, it depends on companies, but we are very much flexible. But uh, typical mm -hmm. ticket sizes are from uh, 3 to $7 million. And up to twenty million dollars per company. So, yeah. got it. Understood. Um, and so, obviously, um, MUFG and MUIB made waves last year uh, by investing to a collective of seven hundred million in Grab, which is one yes. of Southeast Asia's largest unicorns. Um, and so, um, could you tell us a bit more about what were the bank's objectives behind this particular corporate venture capital investment? Thank you, much. Uh, so initially, so I have to, you know, let you know that, so, you know, uh, MLG has, uh, uh, affiliate banks in, uh, major ASEAN countries like uh, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam. Uh, we call partner banks. Uh, some banks are our, you know, subsidy, but some are just affiliated banks. But anyway, so we have such a four local banks as a partner in the region. So, uh, the main objective of our investment in Grab is, you know, to, you know, uh, bridge between Grab's, uh, you know, businesses and also uh, our partner banks business. So typical case is, uh, uh, you know, so Grab has so many, you know, drivers in the region mm -hmm. and uh, our local banks, uh, wants to provide a loans to such a drivers. But previously, 
uh, our banks cannot provide a loan because uh, usually, so Grab driver, you know, don't have a, a credit history. And uh, so, but now we can access to uh, Grab's proprietary data set regarding each driver's income and also how safely each driver drives a bike or what is the reputation of uh, you know, each driver is or so on. Mm -hmm. So based on such uh, uh, alternative data, so mm -hmm. now we can uh, provide a, a bike loan to uh, uh, Grab's drivers, you know, with uh, very appropriate uh, terms and conditions. So that's a very successful case. So we have done such a, uh, you know, collaboration with Grab in the region, but also Grab is a tech company and they have more than 300 or 400 AI engineers, hmm. which is, uh, I can say, one of the big organizations among the, you know, uh, Asia, you know, uh, with uh, such a, uh, so very talented AI engineers. Mm -hmm. So MLG also would like to work with Grab in terms of the, you know, utilization of Grab's AI, you know, engineering resources too in Japan. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, and so, I, I mean, that makes a lot of sense from MUFG's perspective. And I think in a similar vein, um, one of your other portfolio companies, Bukukas, um, you know, was very curious to, so Bukukas, uh, for those who don't know, is an Indonesian company that's creating the end-to-end -end software stack for SMEs, uh, both on the back end for inventory and account management and on the front end uh, with a product called Toko for, you know, e-commerce SaaS uh, for MSMEs. Um, and Suzuki-san, uh, you know, just, you know, trying to think of, you know, which are the other ways that MUFG and MUIP look at what are the potential points of collaboration. Uh, when it came to Bukukas, what attracted you to this particular play in Southeast Asia? Yes, uh, like, so case of a graph, so MUFG like to uh, partner with uh, uh, platform companies like uh, Bukukas. And as you mentioned, Bukukas provide uh, two uh, cloud services for uh, Indonesian SMEs. So one is the bookkeeping service, and the other is uh, e-commerce platform services. And uh, uh, now company has more than 6 million users. And uh, in Indonesia, so uh, there are over 60 million SMEs. So which means the company already, you know, penetrating the 10% of the market, and which is a very attractive for our local bank, uh, bank, uh, bank Danamo. So uh, Bank Danamo is uh, one of our uh, partner banks in the region. And, uh, uh, so Bank Tanamo is uh, now planning to provide uh, various banking services over Bukas platform. And, uh, also, uh, Bank Tanamo wants to, uh, you know, provide, uh, you know, QR payment services. And, uh, so, uh, they want to sell such a services to, uh, uh SME clients over Bukas too. So we are seeing uh, such, uh, uh, synergies uh, in Indonesia. Interesting. And just to add to that, what role uh, is MUFG? So these are the current points of collaboration. And are, is there any additional role or is there an expanding role that you see MUFG playing uh, to help Bukuka scale? Yes. Uh, so initially, MUIP invested in Bukas, and uh, which is a very uh, important initial, you know, how can I say, uh, uh, you know, trigger for the collaboration. And but after that, so we are, you know, trying to facilitate, uh, uh, you know, conversation between Bank Tanamo and Bukas right. for the collaboration. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's it might be too early to say, but uh, also Bukas might you know, uh, want to go global, you know, right. which means mm -hmm. uh, currently they totally focus on Indonesian market, which is a very large, you know, market in ASEAN countries. But also, uh, you know, their services are quite uh, good. And also there should be similar kind of demand in other countries like Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, the way we have also local banks there too. Right. So, uh, so in the future, so, uh, you know, we are seeing, uh, also our, you know, other, you know, local banks can work with the bookers in uh, each, you know, country. Yeah. So actually that's, that's a really fair point about how you know, corporate venture capital from the right investor can actually help you scale regionally, not in terms of not only depth wise, but also horizontally across the region. Uh, and, I, and I suppose that's what the Bukukas team was very excited about um, yeah. while evaluating MUFG as an investor. So, you know, I mean, like Bukukas, uh, we've seen startups like Dukan and Bikai in India, 
received massive funding to build these similar software stacks for Indian SMEs. Uh, you know, CVC Capital in India is also get, becoming very active. Razor Pay recent, recently raised money from Salesforce Ventures. Um, and so, you know, you mentioned that at the moment, MUIP has not made an investment uh, in India. And, you know, very keen to hear your thoughts on how are you evaluating the Indian fintech landscape at the moment? Yes. Uh, actually, you know, uh, we are seeing opportunity in India too. And uh, so we had, you know, visited, uh, you know, India several times in the past uh, to meet with uh, <coughs> VCs and also startups there. And, uh, uh, but, uh, so, uh, MLG has some challenges regarding the, you know, uh, partnering with the uh, Indian startups. So, uh, actually in India, so MLG has, uh, uh several branches in the major, uh, cities, you know, uh, like Bangalore or New Delhi and so on. Right. But, okay. uh, uh, major target in India is currently for uh, Japanese, uh, large enterprises, you know, which operate the business in Indian market and also, uh, top tier large enterprises in India too. But, uh, uh they don't have uh, any, uh, business with, uh, uh, you know, SMEs or consumers in India. Right. And which created some kind of difficulties for us to work with a fintech company. So, you know, mm-hmm. if you think about, uh, you know, you know, case of a grab. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I mentioned that, so our ro- local Thailand bank, you know, uh, provide a loan to uh, Grab drivers. But uh, in India, so you know, MAG cannot provide, uh, let's say, loan to uh, Indian consumers or SMEs, right? Right. Uh, so uh, that's a typical case. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, so we are seeing that, so, so rise of, uh, you know, very high quality, you know, global tech companies from mm. India too. So typical case is uh, Paytm, which is as you know very you know famous you know uh, payment solution companies in the region, yes. and the Paytm actually uh, you know uh, has partner with a SoftBank in Japan, yes. and uh, uh, SoftBank launched a uh, uh, you know new QR code payment service you know PayPay uh, mm. in Japan with a Payt- Paytm support. Mm. And uh, so this is a bit typical case, but uh, uh, I can say that you know MLG. Uh, might be able to work with the Indian tech companies in, uh, not in India, but uh, in Japan or other regions where we have, uh, you know, some local businesses. So mainly, so in that case, so our investment object is to, you know, obtain or access to, uh, you know, uh, advanced technologies in uh, maybe mm-hmm. fintech. So. So, that's so I, I, I'm, yes, I'm seeing such opportunities. Yes, fascinating. That's that's really fascinating. Um, so you mentioned uh, in the payment space how Paytm's tech, you know, QR code technology is now you know being piloted in Japan. Uh, what are some of the other kinds of fintech technologies that are exciting MUIP today that that are coming out of India? Yeah, actually, you know, we are seeing uh, so many uh, high quality, you know, tech companies in, in India. So, you know, there are several spaces like, uh, let's say, software as a service. And uh, I met with uh, some Indian companies in uh, software, you know, as a service types, you know, businesses. And they provide, uh, let's say, you know, human resource related cloud service for uh, uh, not only Indian clients, but also they provide a service to, uh, uh, you know, South Asia and also Japan, which is, uh, you know, the name is a KPI yeah. software. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also there are also so many good AI, you know, uh, related companies too in India. So. Fair enough. Absolutely. Um, so, I, you know, I think at this uh, point, let's shift gears to uh, from a startup's perspective and, yeah. uh, you know, in, you know, in terms of the exit strategies that, um, they can pursue. So from a startup's perspective, Suzuki-san, what advice would you give to a growth state startup, uh, which is considering an investment from a CVC fund? Uh, yes, that's a very good question. And uh, I can say, so, you know, we have, uh, you know, two types of CVC, you know, and one is, uh, you know, CVC, but uh, it's more, you know, like a very open type CBC for startups and I don't care about partnership or exclusivity. So let's say, uh, you know, Intel or uh, Google Ventures, uh, maybe, you know, maybe in this category. And, uh, so they consider, so, you know, uh, you know, CBC as a way of, uh, you know, 
uh, independent business. But also in sometimes maybe uh, they want to pursue a collaboration with uh, such uh, portal companies. Right. Uh, but a uh, uh, major target, uh, so, you know, making money from investment. You know, based, mm. for, you know, based on the so company's, you know, business assets, you know. Mm. And uh, there's a CBC is uh, more like a very serious type of CBC, which focus on uh, a very strict, you know, business strategy with the portal companies, which include MAIP. And uh, so in case of working with the serious CBCs, so you need to be very careful. And uh, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, you need to consider about trade-off between A, uh, investment support, and B, exclusivity, right? Mm. So sometimes so such a CBC demand, so, you know, some kind of uh, exclusivity, exclusivity regarding partnership. And uh, so, uh, but also, you know, you need to maybe uh, take, make, you know, you need to consider about, so what the value process from the CBC is, uh, you know, to you guys. So that's a very right. important point. And uh, so I recommend you to confirm, you know, what is a, uh, real value of the, mm. you know, uh, companies behind the CBC, you know, to you. So that's a very uh, important question. Yes. And uh, regarding MIP, so we try not to, you know, uh, how can I say, uh, uh, limit the potentiality of our portal companies by mm. having a very strict exclusivity partnership and so on. Okay. Usually, so we request just a minor advantage, you know, over other, let's say, peer companies like Japanese banks and so on. Mm. Like, uh, uh, if you develop a new services, we just want to have a, you know, advanced six months, you know, uh, how can I say, uh, you know, SLP. And after that, you can work with any banks in Japan, but we just need a six month advance, advan advantage or something like that. So that's a typical case, but, uh, uh, we try not to, you know, limit, uh, our portal companies, you know, growth, you know. Um, so, you know, that I, I hear you. So, you, you, you know, just to summarize my understanding, yes, two types yes. of CBCs, one, uh, you know, is really just it's using it as a as the fund is to do wealth creation for the company yeah, and maybe yeah. there will be strategic priorities. And I, if I've understood correctly, that's towards where MUIP is veering. And then the second, where it's very strategic. Um, you know, yeah, we are, we are, we are strategic and we are strategic yeah. investor. You know, I can say that, but, uh, uh, we don't want to uh, limit our portal companies. So potentiality by, uh, you know, requesting them, uh, so too much exclusivity. Too much yeah. exclusivity. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, so, you know, with respect to, um, kind of finding a balance, are there any, in fact, I'm just curious to know, uh, are, are there any investments that MUIP has made? where, you know, there's not a complete, like, you know, there's not an immediate strategic fit, um, but you're still, you've still gone ahead and made that investment, or is it each time uh, there needs to be a yeah, research? Actually, we have some, you know, uh, allocation strategy, and uh, I can say 50% of our investments are, you know, base strategic, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, so where we, uh, you know, pass immediate collaboration with uh, our portal companies, Mm. But uh, the rest of the 50% are more like, uh, I can say, R&D type investment. So yes. where we don't pursue uh, immediate collaboration with our uh, portal companies, but uh, right. from a middle term or longer term point of view, right. uh, we like to maintain relationship with such a companies, you know. Right. Uh, so, so in that case, so, you know, uh, in some cases, we just, we just want to learn something new from our portal companies and mm. uh, eventually, you know, timing is uh, mature. So, you know, we, you know, try to have a very serious collaboration with uh, such a companies. But yeah. uh, our time horizon is like uh, maybe three to five years regarding collaboration with uh, such r and type investment companies. Makes, got it, got it. And when you're considering a startup investment, so we've seen it from a startup's perspective and, you, you know, the key takeaway for you from what, what I understood is really, you know, the startup should be focused on how, how much does this money kind of bind you in with that corporate partner yeah, yeah, yeah. to exclusivity? And that's an important consideration. From your perspective uh, at MUIP, Suzuki-san, how important is startups' exit potential when you're considering an, an investment? Yes, uh, actually, we are CBC fund, but also we need to balance between strategic synergy and also investment return. And uh, so 
We like、uh, portal companies to go public or to be acquired by other third parties and which give us、uh, some good returns. So that's our、okay. uh, basic idea. So,、mm -hmm. uh, so yes.、Mm. Right.、Um, and which is fair, you've given a very diplomatic response there mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. to、uh, how you would look at a startup's exit potential. Yeah, so, but、uh, in, in, in some cases, you know, as a CBC, you know, one of the also successful goal of our also, you know,、mm -hmm. our portal company is to be acquired by MFG2 in the future. Yes. So, you know, maybe we are seeing,、uh, multiple exit, you know,、uh, strategies, you know, IPO, uh, you know, acquired by somebody or acquired by MG as a very, you know, important strategic partner. Yeah. Right. Right. And,、um, and what,、uh, at what stage do you think that a startup should start considering an exit strategy? Yes. Uh, if you are in later stage, you need to think about, so how you can go IPO or,、uh, how maybe, you know, you can be acquired by other companies. Uh, because, uh, obviously if you have a VCs on your cap table, VCs, you know, always maybe ask about the exit strategy. But, uh, uh, if you are in early or middle stage, uh, so, Don't try to think about exit, but focus on,、mm. uh, uh, you know, growing a business. That's a very important、mm. point because,、uh, exit strategies, you know, you know, consume their time. And,、uh, it's, it's actually time consuming and, uh, procedure. And, uh, so my, my thought is, uh, so as long as, so you manage good company, good businesses, so exit will follow eventually. Yeah. So don't think too much about exit. So when、uh, you are in early or middle stage, a very powerful,、um, yes. you know,、uh, statement and and you know something that I think a lot of startups, particularly in the growth stage, should pay heed to.、Um, so you know, I I I think we I want to end on kind of just an overall. You know, taking stock of how Southeast Asia and, and India have, how the landscape has been changing. You know, in the recent past, of course, we've seen Freshworks become the first Indian SaaS startup to list on NASDAQ. Flip Garden, Zomato IPOs have, you know,、uh, excited everyone.、Um, and, and, you know, we're seeing this huge startup appetite and investor appetite for IPOs. And,、uh, you know, just want to end. With you know, getting your insights and how has this impacted your personal appetite? For yes, of course. Yes, I think so. Now we are seeing a geopolitical issue between the US and China, and which might have good impact on India and South Asian states. Since so, US investors are looking for、uh, you know. Uh, foreign investors instead of Chinese, you know, startups. Right. So obviously, environment is good for、uh, startups in the region, and also,、uh, you know, capital market in each country is, you know, getting matured,、uh, which is、mm. good. And、mm. uh, since we are seeing a rise of,、uh, you know, middle class people in each country, like India or South Asia, and certain middle class people, you know, are affordable to invest in、uh, stocks. Right. Yes. And uh, so, uh, I have seen, I have seen, uh, you know, South Asia and Indian stock market for almost maybe, uh, you know, you know, 15 years.、Mm -hmm. And, but, uh, initially, so, you know, uh, we haven't seen、uh, enough liquidity to support, uh, you know, uh, especially young startups IPO in、uh, mm -hmm. uh, each region. So even, Each country has、uh, their own emerging stock market for startups, but actually we see very small, small numbers of IPO and also daily trading volume is very small, which you、yes. know, causes issues, obviously. But now things are changing.、Yeah. And、uh, so I think、uh, so all stock market in India or South Asia is very active. And also, as I mentioned, because,、uh, you know, tension between US and China. So a lot of US investors are seeking for a good investment opportunities in India and South Asia.、Mm -hmm. So obviously,、uh, the timing, you know, and also environment for startups are very good. Fantastic. Great. Well, that's fantastic news to end on. And we're very excited to have MUIP become more active in the fintech ecosystem, particularly in India.、Uh, sure, we've already seen you make so many, you know, I mean, two very high profile investments,、uh, more than two in Southeast Asia. And,、uh, and also, personally, I want to thank you, Suzuki san, for, you know, joining me on this fireside chat and、uh, to GFF for having us. Thank you, Anya san. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Suzuki-san, for those uh, insights that you've shared with us. And thank you very much, Ananya, for beautifully moderating. I think it's been an enlightening start here for the FinTech Fest. Thank you once again. Thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye.